and good morning. We thank you for joining the God's Way Ministry once again for another blessed and beautiful Sunday morning that God has allowed us to see. And as always, we say this is a day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because God is good all the time and all the time God is truly good. We thank you for your continued love, prayers, and support of this ministry. And we want you to know that this ministry loves you. We are praying for you and we believe in God for miracles in your life. Praise God. Let's get right into what God has for us this morning. We're looking at our text, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And it reads, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you and we praise you for another great and glorious opportunity to come before this, your people. Father God, we thank you, O God, for all that you've done for us, Lord, and we just pray. As always, that you would hide us behind the cross, that they will only hear and see you, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Father God, we pray that you will speak through us and to us today, Lord, that we will hear from you, because, Lord, we all need a word from you. Lord, grab us by the reins of our minds and help us to stay focused on your word, your will, and your way. Bless us right now. Come on in and have your way right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to talk to you for a little while from the subject, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. When we begin to look at that particular subject and we begin to break it down, we've heard this, this uh, phrase before so many times that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. We, we tend to focus on a whole lot of stuff that we don't need to focus on. We tend to deal with a whole lot of stuff in our mind that we don't need to deal with. We tend to allow the devil to put stuff in our mind that shouldn't be there. We allow folks to talk to us and put things in our mind that shouldn't be there. But I'm here to tell you this morning that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Don't let folks and things destroy your mind. Don't let folks and things take your mind off of what God is trying to get you to focus on, off of the direction that God is trying to get you to go in. We must learn that this world owes us nothing. This world has nothing for us. We are in this world, as the Bible said, but we are not of this world. We are in him. And yes, we live here, but we don't have to be of this world. Just because that everybody else is doing it doesn't mean we have to do it. Just because everyone else is living that wicked and sinful life doesn't mean we have to do it. Yeah, it may look good, but I guarantee you in the end, it's not going to work out in your favor. That's why I text in 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, love not the world. Don't love this world. Don't get caught up in this world. Don't desire to do things of the world. He said, and neither the things that are in the world. Don't love none of it. Don't get caught up in any of it. Say, if any man loves the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. So that means if you don't fell in love with the worlds and the ways of this old world and you're caught up in this world, so now you're not just in the world, but you actually become of this world, now you got a problem. There is no way you can love God. Like I told you before, there is no way you can walk with the Lord while holding hands with the devil. It doesn't work like that. You got to make a choice. You either love one or you hate the other, but you got to make a decision. And only one of them will control your mind. Only one of them will order your steps. Only one of them will have a good plan for you. Only one of them will take you from earth to glory, and that's God. So you got to let him control your mind. Just like the old song said, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on the Lord. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning focused on just what God wanted me to be focused on. I woke up this morning thinking about about the things of God and how can I go about achieving what God wants me to achieve. I woke up this morning desiring to be in the presence of God. You, you got to wake up every morning with a desire to want to be with him, with a desire to want to do his will, not with a desire for this world, not with a desire to do the things of the world. But in order to get to heaven, I got to keep my mind focused on him. These last couple of weeks have 
been kind of rough for me. The devil has been attacking my mind and trying to keep me from being focused on the word of God, keep me from being focused on doing what God wants me to do. And yes, I had that injury four years ago. So a lot of times it's hard for me to concentrate. It's hard for me to focus, but I've learned, Michael, you got to keep calling on the name of Jesus. And the more you call on him, he will fix that mindset. The more you keep calling on him, he'll take away the strain that the devil has on your mind. And we have have to know that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. A lot of us are wasting our mind on junk. A lot of us have our mind focused on junk, but I stopped by to tell you that you got to build your hopes on things eternal. If you just hold to God's unchanging hand, God got some stuff for you, baby, that the devil can't even imagine. God got some stuff for you that can't nobody take away from you if you just stay focused on him. Ha! Glory to God. I, I know somebody hear what I'm saying. Verse 16 said, for all that is in the world, this is all that the world provides for you, is this right here, the lust of the flesh. In other words, that's self. I got to feed self. I got to give self what it wants. I, I desire this in my flesh. There's no good thing, as Paul says, dwell in my flesh. The flesh only wants to do what's wrong. The flesh only wants to please the flesh. Paul was letting us know every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. Every time I'm striving to live for God, the devil always got to put something in the way. Every time I'm seeking to trust God, believe God, and obey God, what does the devil do? The devil start playing my mind games with you. He start playing tricks on your mind. The Lord don't really love you. He's not really there for you. If he was really a caring God, would you be going through like you're going through? If he was really a caring God, would you be sick the way you are? If he was really a caring God, would you still have these family problems that you have? But I'm stopping by to tell you right now, God got the power to heal. God's got the power to deliver. God's got the power to make a way out of nowhere if you just trust him. If you just keep your mind focused on him, don't get caught up in what the flesh wants to do. Don't let the flesh overpower you. Don't let the flesh overtake you and point you in the direction of the world to go and do what the world wants to do. And I need you to understand when the Bible mentions the world, we're not talking about planet earth, but we're talking about doing things that the devil wants you to do. Those mean and bad stuff that the devil had you caught up in. Those, those bad habits that the devil wants you to do. That's what we're talking about being caught up in the world. Then it says, and the lust of the eye. Now I really tend to get a lot of us in trouble. Your eyes cause you to look at things you shouldn't be looking at. Your eyes cause you to uh, focus on other stuff that you shouldn't be focused on when you really need to be focused on the word of God. And I've learned in my life, the more time I spend focusing on the word of God will be the less time that I have to focus on garbage and junk and mess that has nothing to do with God that won't propel me into the right direction. Have I got any help in here? A lot of us, we are so busy wanting to be around folk that we don't need to be around. And all those folks are doing is taking you down because they're not focused on God and they're trying to keep you from being focused on God. So the lust of the eyes, when we talk about the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh, it leads me to a story about a man named David. David lost his focus. Instead of being on the battlefield for the Lord, instead of fighting like he was supposed to be and standing by his brothers and leading them into battle, David decided he wanted to take a vacation. And I've learned that when we're walking with God, and this Christian life, there's no vacations in being a Christian. There's nothing. You can't stop doing this. This is a constant thing. This is a day-to-day -day lifestyle. It's not something I can pick up today and put down tomorrow. No, baby. It's something that you have to do each and every day. You walk with the Lord each and every day. You live after his precepts each and every day. You follow his commandments each and every day. There's no vacation. And I've learned some of us are getting too comfortable with being Christians. We, we've gotten so comfortable that we don't witness anymore. We've gotten so comfortable that we don't pray every day anymore. We've gotten so comfortable that we don't read the word of God all the time like we should. We don't read every day like we should. We've gotten so comfortable that we don't give God his time like we should. And we're slowly but surely moving off the course 
that God has for us. And now we're pleasing the flesh more and we're pleasing our eyes more and we're forgetting about God. David veered off the court. David was sitting at home. He said, y'all go ahead on and go. I believe y'all can win this battle without me. Y'all don't need me. And David sat around the house. And that's why the Bible says an idle mind is a devil's workshop. We got to constantly be thinking and focusing on the word of God and on what God has for us. Because when you get to the point where you stop focusing on God and thinking about God, the devil creeps in you. And the devil crept right in on David. David couldn't sit around, excuse me, sit around the house no more. David was like, man, let, let me go on the roof. David goes on the rooftop and he sees Bathsheba bathing on her roof. And instead of David being a gentleman and walking away, David stared too long. And the more he stared, the more that desire and that lustful desire built up in David. And David said, man, I got to have her. He said, man, he even started inquiring about her. Hey, hey, bro, you know who that is? And he was like, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's Bathsheba. That's, that, that, yeah, she's married. She's married. But he, he said, no, 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 it don't matter. It don't matter. Bring her to me. Bring her to me. And so she came to him. She even said, yeah, I'm your servant, your Rise wife. That didn't matter to either one of them. They still did what they wanted to do. And I need folks to understand that, that, that when you shift your mindset from God, God's talking to you the whole entire time while you're drifting away. Come back over here. Come back over here. It's just like a GPS system. When we detour off, and we venture off the course, what did it say? Reroute, reroute, what? That means so you can get back on the right course. But what do some of us do? God is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, reroute, reroute, and you still going in the wrong direction. Reroute, reroute, abort, abort. But what are you doing? You still going that way. And what happened? We leave God. God never leaves us. And David left God. And David got into a mess. Not only a mess, but David got into a sinful mess. David messed up and David was trying to cover it up. Once she got pregnant, David was trying to do everything he could to cover it up. He tried to get Uri to go home so Uri could sleep with his wife. Uri wouldn't do it. Uri slept on the steps. And David was like, why you didn't go home? He said, man, my brothers are out there on the battlefield. What makes me different from them? I should be out there with them instead of eating and drinking and being married at home. He said, no, I can't do it. David was like, man, I can't fix this for nothing. Every which way I go is not working out. So David said, I'm going to tell you what y'all do. He said, I want you to put Uriah in the heat of the battle. And everybody just back off and just leave him. And so many words, David had him killed. All because of the lust of his eyes and wanting to feed his flesh. He had this man killed. So he got into a sinful mess that led to death and destruction. And I want you to know that the lust of your flesh and the lust of your eyes will lead you down a path of death and destruction. We got to learn to keep our minds and eyes focused on God. Why? Because a mind is a terrible thing to weigh. We must not take our focus off God. We must make sure each and every day we walk with him, we talk with him, we live with him. We got to make sure that we dwell in the spirit of God each and every day. Why? Because that devil desires to sift you as we. In other words, he wants to destroy you, break you down. He wants to take you away from God. The devil don't want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to hell with him. And a lot of us, we're on our way with smiles on our face. We are on our way. We don't use our mind for anything constructive. We don't keep our hearts built up with the love of God. We're so busy doing it our way. As the Bible said, we're going about establishing our own way of righteousness. We're going about doing it our way. Like Frank Sinatra said in that song, I did it my way. We're so busy trying to do it our way. And every time you try to do it your way, have you ever realized it doesn't work out?
I mean, me and my wife was talking about that one time, and, and we always, how, how people do things, and, and we feel like if I get by myself, I can think better, and I can do it my way, and I can figure out what I want to do. It's okay to get by yourself, but don't listen to self. While you alone, start talking to God. God, how do I fix this situation? How do I fix my marriage? How do I fix this situation on the job? Lord, how do I fix this mind problem? Lord, how do I fix everything that I'm dealing with? And the answer is found in him. If you really want to know how to get your mind right, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2 and 5. I got to keep my mind focused on him, the things of God, the way God wants me to walk, the way God wants me to talk, the way God wants me to live. I got to keep focused on him. Why? Because James 1 and 8 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He can't make good decisions. He don't know whether to go left or go right. He don't know whether to go up or down. He don't know whether to sit down or stand up. He don't know what he wants to do. He's all over the place. Why? Because he's double. He's unstable. He don't know which way to go. He's trying to serve God one minute. Next minute, he's trying to serve the devil. He don't know which way he wants to go. We can't be unstable. We got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And not only that. The Bible says the very first thing you must do is what? Matthew 6 and 33 said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. All these things that you're seeking for and you're trying to do it on your own and you're listening to the devil and trying to do it the sneaky and conniving way. God is saying, all you got to do is seek me. If you seek me, I'll get you a house. I'll make sure you got a roof over your head. If you seek me, I'll make sure you got food on your table. If you seek me, I'll make sure you got a car to ride around it. If you seek me, I'll make sure that everything that you need and some of your wants will be provided for if you just seek me. He says, you got to follow me. If you follow me, I'll bless you in ways that the devil can't. I'll show you some things that you never thought imagined. I'll find, cause you to find favor with people you never thought you would find favor with. All you got to do is follow me and trust me. So therefore, this is what we got to do. Hebrews 12 and 1 said, Wherefore, seeing we are also are compared with about with a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every way and the sin which do easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In other words, I got to lay down the bad habits. I got to get away from around these folks I don't need to be around. I got to stop sitting idle every day and start focusing on God. If you want to receive that miracle, if you want to receive that blessing, you got to get a connection with the one that provides the miracle, provides the blessing, provides the deliverance, provides the way out of nowhere. You got to get with the one that will fix it all. So you got to Keep your mind focused on him. Get rid of all this stuff. Sometimes you just got to strip. You got to do a spiritual strip. Strip it all off. Strip off the bad attitude, the bad habits, the bad mindset, the bad feelings. Strip it all off. Take it off. And when you get rid of all of that stuff, and you're focusing on God. You can run with patience this Christian race that has been set before you. You can run it the way God would have for you to run it. Why? You can run it with ease. Why? Because you got less baggage. Ha! That's all I'm saying. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, saying what I'm saying. In order to be able to run this Christian race right, you got to unload. You got to get rid of some of this stuff. You got to get rid of the mess. And then not only that, Romans 12 Verses 1 and 2 say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. My reasonable service is worshiping God. My reasonable service is giving God the praise for all that he's done. My reasonable service is for walking and talking and living, just like God will want me to walk, talk, live, and act. I got to do what he says to do. He says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. People need to see God not only working on the inside, but they need to see what's going on on the inside. It needs to be seen on the outside because when what's working on the inside starts working on the outside, it'll bring about a change in your life if you will allow it. And verse 2 said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed 
by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It says you can't conform to what's going on in this world. You can't get caught up in this world. You can't allow the world to overtake your mind and overtake your heart and mess your spirit up. It says you got to be transformed. What? By the renewing of your mind. You got to get this right. Renew your mind. What? Get it focused on God. Get it reprogrammed and study the word of God. Live by the word of God. Why? Because the Bible says study it out. Study to show thyself approval. A work with needed not to be ashamed. Always what? Abide. Always being able to rightly divide the word of truth. We got to be able to stay focused. We got to live the way God wants us to live. Walk the way he wants us to walk. And most of all, Romans 8 35 through 39. So who shall separate us from the love of God? Stop allowing folk to separate you from God. Stop allowing stuff to keep you from spending time with God. Stop allowing people to get in the way with their attitudes telling you ain't going to be nothing. You'll never amount to nothing. You ain't going to never go nowhere. Your business going to fail. Your ministry ain't going to go right. Your children ain't no good. They keep telling you all these negative stuff. And one thing I've learned, we've gotten to the point that we start believing the mess of the folk. No, I'm not believing what folk got to say. I'm not believing believe in the hate of the caters and the debaters, but I'm believing God. I'm believing the report of the Lord. The Bible, the Lord says, what? You shall be healed. You shall be delivered and you shall be set free. Somebody needs to say that right there where you are. Say, I command you to be healed, be delivered and be set free. He said, don't let nothing <laughs> separate you from the love of God. Don't let nothing come in the way. Don't let tribulations, all the problems and the issues that you got, don't let them get in the way. You don't let the persecution that people put on you get in the way. Don't let the fact that you may go through some stuff get in the way. And yeah, we're going to deal with some things. But it says that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loved us. The reason why we're more than conquerors, God gives us a strength to overcome this stuff. So at the end of the day, don't let it. No height, no death, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. And out of all of that, this is the main thing that you need to do. Keep pressing. In the midst of your mess, in the midst of your this battlefield that's going on in your mind. Philippians 3 and 14 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. Keep pressing, baby. No matter how hard it gets, keep on pushing. No matter whether you want to give up or not, keep on pushing. Why? Because if we hold on to God's unchanging hand, he's going to pull you through the mess. He's going to pull you through all of this. He's going to win this battle for you. Yes, if you stay focused on him, God will take you just where he wants you to go. He will lead you from earth to glory. If you you just continue to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. And it says in verse 16 of our text scripture, and it goes back and it says, and the pride of life is not of the Father. Don't get caught up in this. It does not have anything to do with God, but it is of the world. And the world will what? One day this world is going to pass away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God will abide forever. In other words, when I'm obedient to God and doing what God is telling me to do, God has a prepared place for a prepared people. And because of that, I go home to live with him if I keep doing just what he wants me to do. Well, the clock on the wall says that's all. It's been real fun, but Red McNeil got to run. See you later, alligator. And after a while, crocodile. But for some of y'all that don't understand how terrible it is to waste a good mind, you, you, you don't understand that, hey, I, I'm doing good. Everything is fine. I got what I want. I'm seeking what I want. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But the root word in that whole statement is I, 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 I. We got to get away from I and start looking up. We got to get away from I and start seeking God. We got to get away from I did all of this and realize that it was God that brought you the way you are. It was God that opened those doors for you. It was God that made a way for you. It was God that turned things around for you. And in order for God to keep doing it, you got to keep your mind focused on him. Don't let the devil deter you. Don't let the devil mess with with your mind and I'm determined I'm not going to let the devil continue to play tricks on my mind. I'm not going to let the devil continue to try to take me out. Why? Because I know I serve a God that's got all power in his hand. I'm not going to allow the devil to keep trying to destroy what God has for me. Why? Because what God has for me, it is for me. And I'm here to tell you, stop listening to the haters, the caters, and the debaters. Trust God. Stop listening to them folk that say you ain't going to be nothing and you'll never amount to nothing. Stop listening to them. Keep trusting 
trusting God. Keep your eyes and mind focused on God. Why? You don't want to waste your mind on foolishness and garbage. Trust God and believe him. And he will make everything all right. If you just keep putting your hands in his hand, if you keep your eyes focused on him and not the lust of this world, if you keep your mind focused on him, he will make everything all right in your life. God bless you.